All right, so we're here with period seven, our blue class, to talk about graphing quadratics when they're in standard form. All right, so the first thing we have to do is you must know what standard form looks like. So here is what standard form looks like. And this, hopefully, is a form that you're familiar with because of all the work we spent factoring, completing the square, and using the quadratic formula. So this is that same form. A, B, and C are the coefficients for this one. Now, do you guys remember from Monday and Tuesday all the stuff we need to find out before we graph these quadratics? What do you remember, Clarissa? Very good. So the first question is always, does it go up or down? Now, how did we do that with vertex form, Clarissa? Do you remember with vertex form? <coughs> Beautiful. Bless you. And that, Clarissa, which is really nice about today, is the same. All right? So you're going to look at A. Again, if A is positive, it opens up. If A is negative, it opens down. Just like vertex form. So that's no different. Okay? Now, after we determined if it goes up or down, what was the second thing we found with vertex form? Very good, Alondra. The axis of symmetry. Do you remember, Alondra, how to find it for vertex form? What was the last one? X equals H. Very good. It's X equals H. Now, unfortunately, with standard form, it's not just X equals a letter. You'll notice we didn't have any H's. All right, so it's not going to be that. All right, it's actually a lot more confusing. You find the axis of symmetry as x equals the opposite of b over 2a. And if you'd like to know how that's the formula, the equation we're going to use, if you check my notes on Classroom later today or this evening, you'll see all of the work that I do to show you why it's this. Okay? You don't have to. Just letting you know that there is work on Classroom that shows why it is equal to that. Anthony, was there a question? Okay. Yes, that's right. We're going to use that formula for the axis of symmetry. All right, if we're doing vertex form this way, then we can just use x equals h. But today is not vertex form. It is standard form. Okay, let's go to part C. What was part C? I'm sorry, Aviana. We're going to talk about what to do with the negative. Can I, like, hold your question until we do an example? So I know what your brain is asking. I'm going to give you two options with it and let your brain decide what you want to do. Leslie? It may not be a fraction. All of this could become a number, an integer. So most of the time, it's actually not a fraction. It will just all boil down to a number. All right. What comes after the axis of symmetry? The vertex. What was the vertex with vertex form? Very good, Maddie. H and K. All right. Again, we don't have H. We don't have K. So watch this. It's going to look pretty confusing. Okay, now I know that looks really confusing. I totally get it. But it's actually not that bad. Remember, as Leslie just asked, this axis of symmetry is going to be a number. Let's say it's x equals 7. Okay? So let's say this becomes 7. All I'm going to do is put 7 as the x value for my vertex. So it's the same. So that's going to be 7. Then to find the y value, we're going to plug in 7 into the function. All right, so we're just going to plug it in for x in the function and figure out what it gets us for y. So it looks really confusing, but the work hopefully you'll see is not too bad. All right, so that's the vertex. What's the very last thing? The y-intercept. What did we have to do with vertex form to find the y-intercept? Plug in 0 for x. All right, now you can do that for standard form, but if you just take a quick peek over here, if you plug in 0 for x, that becomes 0. That becomes 0. So what's left? C. C. So that's why in standard form, the y-intercept is always 0, C. Okay, Clarissa. Always. Always. So can I just hold off on doing that? Because I think once I do a problem, you'll see how to find all of those stuff, all those things. Yeah. So for the y-intercept, 
You can, but it's redundant. You can just write down whatever C is, it's zero that. But you can plug in zero, you'll get C every time. All right, shall we try one together? I think it'll clear up some of these questions. Let's do one. Okay, let's do example one. Think back to Monday. What did I do at the very beginning with the problems from Monday? What was? Close, I used on Monday. A, H, and K. So today, Alondra, you're right, I'm going to do A, B, and C. Okay? What is A in example one? one. It's a positive one. What is B? Negative four. Negative four. And C six. is six. Now, I got this question in my previous class, and maybe someone out there, your brain is thinking about this. Remember from Monday with vertex form, you always had to think opposite for the letter H. Do you guys remember that? Yeah. With letter H, we had to think opposite. Notice we didn't do that because in standard form, it's all addition. Whenever you see all addition signs, it's whatever the sign is comes with it. So you'll notice we don't have to think opposite. Is everybody good with that? So it's like one less thing you got to remember. Remember. OK. Does this open up or down, Anthony? Does this open up or down? Why? Because what? What's not, good? not negative? Hey, very good. So if A is positive, it opens up. Very good. Now the axis of symmetry is that formula, x equals the opposite of B over 2A. So here we go, Aviana. Here's the way I do it. I view this as x equals the opposite of B divided by 2A. Now some students, Aviana, do x equals the opposite of B over 2A. So they wait till the very end to do the negative sign. Me personally, my preference is to take care of that negative sign when I write B. So look at B. It's negative 4. What's the opposite of negative 4? Positive 4. So I took care of it right away. Now, if that's your preference, great. Do that. If not, put in the negative 4, do it all, and then at the end, do the opposite of that number. Yes, Clarissa. Yeah, oh, yeah, always. Because remember, that negative sign is just floating out there. The most incorrect thing I see every time I start teaching this stuff, Clarissa, is students want to make the top and the bottom negative. Right? That would just actually be a positive. right? A negative divided by a negative is a positive. So really, I don't care where you put the negative. Uh, Clarissa, you can put it with the top. You can put it with the bottom. Not both. Or you can leave it till the very end. It doesn't matter. You'll still get the same thing. Okay, so what is 4 divided by 2 in this problem? It's 2. Now, you can be done, but I like to tell my brain that this is a vertical line. So I rewrite x equals 2. Like, that is the axis of symmetry. Okay, questions on axis of symmetry, because that was brand new. Leslie. What is 4 Correct. That's why I don't say negative B. I say the opposite of B. So, Leslie, if that had been positive 4, then this is going to be the opposite of a positive. So I would have written negative 4. All right. Question so far? Now, the moment you get the axis of symmetry, remember Leslie asked this, it became a number. The moment I get the axis of symmetry, I write it as the x value of my vertex. That is always true. I don't know if you noticed this. Uh, with vertex form, but it was x equals h for the axis of symmetry, and the vertex was h, k. So those numbers are always the same. So that number always gets written first, every time. Okay, now, to find the y, this was that confusing stuff that you wrote down for your notes. To find the y, all we're going to do is plug into the function the x value of 2. All right, so I'm going to evaluate this function. For two. So I plug in two where it says X. I plugged in two where it says X. And doing that in the calculator right now, if you have one, literally typing that in exactly as it's written, will give you the y value. 
which is a positive 2. So I'm going to write that there. Now here is the coincidence for this example. I get students that their mind explodes because it was 2 again. This will not always be the same, right? I want to be very clear with your brain right now. The axis of symmetry 2 and the x value 2 will always be the same number. Not 2 always, but it'll be the same number. The fact that this y value is also 2 is a coincidence. Camille. You're asking like why we didn't do this right here? We did. So remember, this became what number? 2. So I wrote it there. That's 2. Then it says, plug into your function that number. So I plugged into our function the number 2. They, they're saying, oh, but are you good? OK, because their brains, I think, got it. Yeah, so if the number was negative 8, I'm plugging in negative 8. Larissa. Mm -hmm. Find your y every time. OK, all right. Let's find the y-intercept. It's 0, c. OK, Alondra, 0, 6. Very good. Remember, the y-intercept is 0, c. OK, now, this is what's really nice about doing these lessons all in the same week when you guys don't work on Friday, is because you get to see the differences between vertex and standard form. But now you're going to see the similarities. If we found all this stuff in mostly different ways than we did on Monday. But now we're about to graph this. And it's no different than what we did on Monday. OK? So how did I graph on Monday? What did I do first? Well, first, I do the vertex. And what was the vertex in this problem? It was 2, 2. All right? So there's the vertex, 2, comma 2. Once I plot that vertex, I know the axis of symmetry is that dotted or dashed line that goes through it. Yes, Evian. Yeah. It will always be vertical because it's always x equals a number, and those are always vertical lines. Bless you. Everybody still good? Now, what's the last thing I can plot before I have to turn to the calculator? 0, 6, the line is set. Very good. So 0, 6 is here. Now, just like on Monday, because of that axis of symmetry, you'll see that 0, 6 is two units away from the axis of symmetry, which means there is a symmetrical point two units on the other side, 4, comma 6. And you can plot that point. Now, at this point, if you don't know what to do, you would return or you would go to your calculator. And you would use the table function that I mentioned on Monday. So you can click table and type in this original function, x squared minus 4x plus 6. What do you mean squared? Oh, you absolutely can. What was A in this problem, Alonzo? A was 1, ready? Okay, start the vertex. Go 1 over. What's 1 squared? Go up 1. There it is. You did it, man. Correct. And I'll show you what happens uh, on Friday when A is not 1. So you got to be here on Friday to see what happens. And you won't see what happens. Yes, Avion. Now, for those of you that typed it into your calculator, you should see in your table of values, you should see 1, 3, and then 3, 3. Those should be in your table of values if you're using the table function. All right? Now, is anyone, does anyone have the table pulled up? Yeah. Yeah? So what is it when x is 5? Because I don't have a point when x is 5. Eleven. It's 11, right? 5, 11 is up here off the grid. So are you expected to graph 5, 11? No, you're not. By Frank's noise, you can see that you are not expected to graph 5, 11. So you're done, ready to make the curve. OK, who's got questions? No questions, really.